Gregory Peck stars as a dying writer haunted by his past in this film adaptation of Ernest Hemingway's The Snows of Kilimanjaro. Susan Hayward and Ava Gardner also star in this drama from 20th Century Fox. Gardner later claimed that her pal Hemingway didn't care for the film, but critics certainly did. The National Board of Review named it one of the 10 best films of the year. It also received Oscar nominations for cinematography and art direction. Get ready for a film so big it took two directors to make it, Henry King and an uncredited Roy Ward Baker. From 1952, The Snows of Kilimanjaro. Kilimanjaro is a snow-covered mountain 19,710 feet high and is said to be the highest mountain in Africa. Close to the western summit, there is the dried and frozen carcass of a leopard. No one has explained what the leopard was seeking at that altitude. Is it sight or is it scent that brings them? They've been about forever so long they don't mean a thing. But the marvelous thing is that it's painless now. Is it really? Yes. That's how you know when it starts. What a filthy bird. Know their business. Used to watch the way they sailed very carefully at first. In case I ever wanted to use one of them in a story. That's funny now. I've gotten so nervous not being able to do anything. I think we might make it as easy as possible until the plane comes. Or until the plane doesn't come. Mr. Johnson hasn't been a white hunter for a quarter of a century not to know his way around. If he can't get a plane, he'll be back with another truck. Uh, one way or another. Not very important. I feel so helpless. I wish there was something I could do. You can take the leg off. Or you can shoot me. You're a good shot. I taught you to shoot, didn't I? Let's not be melodramatic, Harry. You're not going to die. No, I'm dying now. 
Ask those things. They're around every camp. You never notice them. I don't see why this had to happen to your leg in the first place. What have we done, either one of us, to have had this happen to us? Well, I suppose that what I did was forget to put iodine on it when I first scratched it. We were after the Impala, in case you've forgotten. And with a camera at that. That isn't what I meant. And it isn't how you got your leg. No. Not at all. It was at the lake last week. It was a lovely, peaceful day, and those enormous hippos were having their own party. We could have passed them by without incident, but oh no, you had to get so awfully playful. Wenda, Wenda, go to Wakulia. There must be hundreds of them. Hey, look at And you insisted on carrying the boy in your arms all the way back to camp. And it was from all his blood and dirt that you got that infection. <laughs> that could be the point of view. From yours, it would be contact with the lower classes. Being a writer, I prefer to think that it was a quirk of fate, a mere prick of a thorn, that laid the great man low. A lot that matters now. Harry, please. Molo! Whiskey soda. Make it pronto, Molo. It's bad for you. No, it isn't. It's good for you. It's not good for you. No, it's bad for me. Cole Porter wrote the words and music. There's knowledge that you're going mad for me. Hey, that's poetry. Oh, I'm full of poetry now. Rot on poetry. 
Harry. Rotten poetry. Harry, it said in the first aid book to avoid all alcohol. It's not good for you. That's what I meant by giving up. You must do everything you can. How do you do it? I'm too tired. I'll take this, only to keep it away from you. <laughs> you know, that's a pretty good rule for life. Take everything you can, if only to keep it from somebody else. Wish I'd followed it. I'm sure Molo understands more English than you think he does. Molo? Do you want to? Go away, or stuff your ears, so you won't hear the civilized people fighting. Kitoka, Molo. Do you want to? Mimini Toka. Harry. If you think you have to die, is it absolutely necessary for you to kill off everything you leave behind? <laughs> you think this is any fun for me? I don't even know why I do it. Trying to kill to keep yourself alive, I imagine. You won't die if you Oh, it's not dying, not in itself that matters. Is dying a failure? Leaves a bad taste in your mouth. How does a man miss the boat? Did I ever tell you about my beginning? When I was young? With my first love? No, you didn't. And I'm not sure I want to hear it. Tell you all about it over this drink. Tell me without. Uh, there are plenty of things you're lucky I haven't told you. This little ditty had everything. Drama, tragedy, love and poetry. Simply everything. doesn't mean... Oh, yes, he does. You know he does. The old mossback, the nasty, dirty, stuck-up old mossback. Well, he only said we ought to wait. Ah, wait? I like that coming from you. Well, I didn't you say... You bet you didn't. Not once all summer when you wanted to hug and kiss me and get fresh. And all those things about where you take me and what we do. Not once did you yell to me to wait. I love you. You don't even know what love is. Connie. Oh, go fly a kite. Come in, Harry. She'll recover. Connie, I'll shove off for you. You shoved off already. You still intend to become a writer? Yes. Well, there are different kinds of writers, just as there are different kinds of everything. Come another hack. It's easy. Peddle soap to housewives. Nothing wrong with peddling soap. Make a fortune. But I'll tell you the only right approach to real writing. It's like a hunt. It's a hunt in which a man pits his brains against the forces of ignorance and evil. It's a lifelong, lonely safari. The prey he seeks is a truth worth telling, faith worth living by, something worth spilling his guts about, that he's tracked down by himself. I don't know if you'll be one to have the fortitude to stick it, to follow the spoor, no matter where it leads, to what pain and suffering, to hell and high water. If you are, God help you. God pity you. And good luck. But I beg you not to ruin yourself before you start by loading your pack with excess baggage. Well, that's my business, isn't it? Yes. Yes, it is. You know, you're young. You'll need to travel and learn. Education. 
I'd like to help. I think I've made clear the conditions. Your birthday next week. Yes. Yeah. From now on, you might regard that Springfield as your own. Shall we have a try for deer tomorrow? Good weather for it. Well, I've lived all right. Where has it got me? To a camp in Africa with you. A rich, beautiful wife. Before you, how many others? That's traveling alone. In a pig's eye. Well, have it your way, Harry. I'm going to shoot some game. The larder's almost empty. I'll change into my boots and call Molo. Uh, Helen, you shouldn't pay any attention to me, really, darling. I love you, you know. Why, I've never loved anyone the way I loved you. I won't take any more, darling. Not before you go. Come here. Hmm? Give me a kiss. I'm reading this. Harry! <laughs> Why do you have to turn into a devil? Because <laughs> if I can't die happy, I can try to die delirious. <laughs> How can I help you if you won't help yourself? By going to sleep? No, thank you. There'll be plenty of that soon enough. The time I've got left. I've got plenty to think about. Well, I'll leave you to your thoughts. Only this time, try to get some of them straight. Just go do your killing. That's what we're good at, both of us. Abdullah! Abdullah! Get out the Springfield! Get out the Springfield! And the solids! And the solids! In English, that's quite a question. Un fine. Un fine. Now, from other sources. you to quit your job to do it. Look, do you mind if I cut it? Ah, ah, forage for yourself, chum. <laughs> oh, Harry, you don't stay? Well, it's a case of avoiding a broken nose, Emil. <laughs> Mine or old Compton's. Because a laugh like hers would just have to lead it to a lousy fight. Bonsoir.
thanks. I'm Cynthia, Cynthia Green. Sin, that's nice. When did you come in? No minutes ago. Well, I'll be happy. The latest thing from home. I'm, uh... Harry Street, Chicago Tribune, and you're right. Ex-Chicago Tribune. And I'm trying to write. Well, they're telling it the other way. Do you mind? Well, everybody's trying something over here. Or at least trying to try. What are you trying to do? Are you trying to paint? No. I'm not trying to paint. Are you trying to sculpt? No, I'm not trying to sculpt. Well, then you must be trying to write, too. No. I'm only trying to be happy. Well, everybody's trying something. <laughs> I'll bet I'm the only person in the whole darn place who's only trying to be happy. You'd better take this from me. I sometimes drink too much. Anything's fair in the pursuit of happiness. Oh, I'm not completely idle. I, I pose sometimes. And what my maiden aunt calls the altogether? Sometimes. Mm -hmm. Well, we all have to make our way with whatever we were given. <laughs> oh, hasn't that African got any piety at all? Particularly Compton's lady. I'm not Compton's lady at all. I'm my own lady. Well, how would you like it if you and I were just piety right out of here? I expect I'd like it very much.
that first time in Paris. The Paris that I loved. The Place Country Scarf, where the flower sellers dyed their flowers in the street. The dye ran purple over the paving stones where the auto bus started. And the children played in the streets in the spring sunshine. And the wooden coal man's place. He's old wine, too. Bad wine. And the golden horse's head outside the Boucherie Chevalier, where the carcasses hung yellow, gold, and red in the window. And the green painted cooperative where we bought our wine. Good wine and cheap. Our apartment was a room and a half. And there I did my work. And Cynthia took up housekeeping. And together, we did all of the things which go to make up living. our neighbors in that quarter. We were all poor, and in that poverty, and in that quarter, I finished that first book. A good book, the start of all I thought I was to do. And I called it The Lost Generation, not knowing at the time how much it was about my Cynthia. Your very first book, and it's going to be published. No. Yes, so now we can get that How one. much is the advance? The, the check. Oh, check. oh. How much? <laughs> it isn't so very much, but it isn't so little either. Oh, uh, well, you're right. It isn't so very much. Uh, it'll do. We pinch. Oh, darling, now we can get that lovely apartment on the same. Now we can go to Africa. Oh. oh. Never was another time for me like that first time in Africa. <laughs> he says he's a fine bull. I know what he says. When do we get going? We'll get downwind and work up on him. Time to them side had the first shot. What? Oh, no, no, I don't want it. How correct you are, Mr. Johnson. No, I definitely don't want Come it. Come on, you'll do it marvelously. Bunduki now, Mem side. Come on, he's all yours. Now, take it easy. Just imagine he's a tin can in the can. But he's not a tin can. Uh, Harry, I don't want to. Shoot low at this distance. Careful, don't spook him. Now, just set him squarely in your sights. 
Freeze yourself. And squeeze. Dearest Harry, please shut up. Come on, hurry up. Will you shoot the... You missed. I told you I didn't want to do it. No harm done. Everybody misses. Me for my day. I never claimed I was a hunter. You're the hunter. Yes, and you. <laughs> the great white hunter. <laughs> sure, sure. Come on, Annie Oakley. Have yourself a drink. <laughs> Don't let the master ride you. Oh, shall we get going? He took cover there. What do you mean, get going? Where will he break out, do you think? I won't go, and I don't want you to. I'm frightened. Well, you probably scared him half to death. There won't be anything to it. All right, then. If you're going, so am I. Oh, no, you're not. Is she, Mr. Johnson? You married her. You're going to stay here with Simba. I was only having fun. Harry, don't you want to kiss me? Kiss you goodbye? Well, aren't you extravagant? You stay here and be brave. Simba, I'm sorry, Kifaro, Mensa. Kifaro. Harry! 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 Now go back! Go back! Harry! Look lively. Look lively. Harry! About it! Root it, Mensa! Root it! Root it! Root it, Mensa! comes out of the bush at you. A million things seem to happen at once. Is it always like that? It's very simple. Either you run or you get busy. It's not at all simple. You could write a lot about it if you could, if you could get it just right. Different feelings at the different times. Today it was like uh, an explosion of purest joy. It was like a dam bursting. Why is it everyone who comes to Africa has to write a book about it? One silly beggar even dedicated his to me. Never came back or I'd have shot him in the pants. <laughs> Can't you two let it alone, even at night? We're only talking about your rhino. He wasn't mine. Well, it was all yours. All we did was polish him off for you. <laughs> Anybody want another look at that horn? A pretty good horn. What's the matter with me, Mr. Johnson? Everybody isn't required to like Africa, you know. I try to put up a show because I know he loves it so. But all of it, the hunting, the killing, it terrifies me. See here, this thing that he was talking about, excitement, call it courage. The way he feels it is a man's feeling, natural in a man. Grows in a man and makes him a man. Not particularly to his credit if he has it, but something lacking if he hasn't. A woman shows her courage in other ways, many ways. I've got another fear now, worse. 
I'm going to have a baby. What? We came to Africa for trophies. Harry's got his and I've got mine. Well, it's natural enough, isn't it? Shall I tell him? What'll he think? Mr. Johnson, when I first met Harry, how's your drink? Uh, no, thanks. Well, that's so. All my life, I'd just been drifting. Nobody, no place. I guess you'd say I had no personal security. But when I first got to know Harry, you could have seen him in Paris. Have you ever been to Paris, Mr. Johnson? No. Unnatural, maybe, but I never had the desire. Makes no difference. You've seen him here. Well, there was I, weak and needing. And there was he, strong and confident. And every bit of me said, this is all of it. And when we first went to live at his place, I was happy just to sit and watch him as much as I could, content to just sit still and hold on to my feeling of safety. But Harry was never still, even when he worked. No sooner had he finished his first book than he said we were going to Africa. I didn't want to stir, but I, I felt that if I told him so, I'd lose something. And now he's, he's already talking about other places. And if I tell him about this anchor, this child, this, this load of responsibility, it isn't things I want. Believe me, nothing like it, but only him is a rock to hold on to. So, shall I tell him now and risk beginning to lose him or I'll put it off and see if something happens? It isn't it enough I have to guide you greenhorns on safari? Am I hired to be an old nurse too? Be Mr. Johnson, my friend. Really? Well, see here, I'm just a hunter. I can only say it the way I know how. But it's when you run away, you're most liable to stumble. <laughs> well, they may have better horns and museums, but 33 inches is nothing to be ashamed of. Good night. Good night. night. Now, what's the matter with him? He's going to bed. Oh, it's too early. I feel too good. Oh, I wonder if there'll ever be another time as good as this. Harry. Listen, just listen. Bedtime lullaby, eh? There's an awful lot of everything there is in this. Hunger. Love, hate. Fright. Someday. Darling. Don't spoil it. Don't talk it all away.
soon as you reach Paris, see your own physician. I'm sure he'll confirm what I've told you. You'll have to be quiet. No running about, no excitement. Probably means you're spending much of the time in bed. Clear? I understand. Some women are like that. But if you want the child badly enough, it won't seem like such a sacrifice now, will it? Shall I have a talk with your husband? Oh, no. I'll tell him. Thank you, Doctor. Good luck. Thank you. Oh, I'll take that. Sunday, Mum, Sam. Oh, you just put right there, please. Yes, darling. Hmm? Oh. <laughs> I thought you were... On the table, Saeed. Look what just arrived. A letter from the publisher and a check. is isn't very much, but it's a check. So everything's going to work out all right. What will, darling? All of it. Say, what old Sawbones say? Nothing frightful. Didn't pick up a fever. No, I... Well, what did I tell you? All you need is a change of climate. We'll go directly to Madrid. We'll have the bullfights, the Grecos at El Prado, then up to Pamplona in time for the fiesta. Harry. Luckiest timing in the world. Darling, couldn't we just go home? Home? What is that? Oh, you mean back to Paris? Oh. Why? Just to go home. Look, darling, we can get a nice apartment with a check, with a room for you to work in. You don't have to go to Spain, do you? No, darling, I don't have to go to Spain. Or any place else. You just want to. Well, look, Cynthia, if I have to sound like a lousy, stuffed academician, I'm trying to become a writer. It's a writer's business to buzz around. Find out about things for himself, not sit on his can in a comfortable chair and reach for a bookcase for something to crib from. And after Spain? How, how do I know? I mean, you'll never want this other normal thing. I'm trying to explain what is my normal thing. With maybe children. Children? Darling. I want a child more than anything in the world. Something of my very own to hold on to. Oh, well, well, sure. <laughs> I love kids, but later. Well, you've got lots of time. Look, Sin, the world is a market in which you buy what you want. Not just with money, but with your time. With a lot of things. It's an exchange. You give something and you get something. I'm giving up a piece of my life to get something that I need for my work. Later on, we can afford what we can afford. It's as simple as that. I see. Can I fix your drink? Uh, it's a little bit early, isn't it? Seems to me to be just about the right time. Do you object? No. Looks in. If you have this yen to go to Paris, well, you can go there. Without you? Oh, well, I'm not saying that I want it. <laughs> I'm just saying that you can go there. Or if... Uh, it's a matter of life and death. Okay, I'll go with you.
Mr. Street? Yes. I'm Dr. Simmons. Well, how do you do? How is she? I'm sorry to have to tell you she lost the child. The what? You didn't know Mr. Street? Exactly what happened. They told me at the hotel that there'd been an accident. That it was a nasty fall. But she'll be quite all right after a few days' rest. Do you actually mean you didn't know about the child? Don't you people talk to each other? You did it deliberately. It was an accident. You did it because of what I said. It was an accident. I stumbled. You didn't have any right to do it. It's my child, too, you know. Don't, darling. when I got seats way up here. Better? Anything you say, darling. Up here, you can see the whole thing as a spectacle. It's quite a sight. Darling, I think that dancer likes me. Oh, if the dancer likes you, I like you too, darling. Yes, but his liking is new. And yours is old. An old, old story that's ending. What did the telegram say, Harry? Oh, darling, you don't want to be childish? You've read it. Offered me an assignment to cover the fracas in Damascus. Between the Syrians and the French. Yes, that's what it said. But that isn't what it meant. It meant that I'm beginning a lifetime without you. Oh, that's real nonsense. Then why didn't you ask me to go with you? Darling, there's a war going on there. There's a war going on here, too, right here at this table. There's a dandy little war going on. Darling, you shouldn't drink too much. No, no. I shouldn't do a lot of things too much. I shouldn't love you too much. I'm awfully bad for you. We're so hopelessly in love, and we can't make it work. Well, that's nonsense, darling. I shouldn't have wanted to be happy too much. <laughs> I expected it to come like a gift. And I shouldn't follow you around. I'm a drag on you, and I hate every bit of it. I shouldn't even have wanted to have your child. It wasn't fair to you. Cynthia. 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 
got to forget that. You're driving yourself crazy. Yes. I ought to forget. I ought to just go back to Paris alone, as you say, and not drive myself crazy at all while I wait for you. And wait and wait. Don't you even know you're lying? I'm not lying. No. No, it isn't a lie yet. It won't be a lie until you go away and discover you're not coming back, but are going on and on and see the whole world, even if you lose it for us. You know, I, I think this dancer likes me very much. All right, the dancer likes you very much. You ought to make me very happy now. Makes me feel dreadful. Shall we invite him over to the table? You think his manners would be as nice as yours? You think he'd ask me first if I'm Harry's lady? And women can pick the times to start a row. Oh, that's not raw, darling. It's very sad. You with your ambition, me with my guilt. A lot of things are sad. Why do they put the pads on the horses in the bullfights? I've told you that. Tell me again. It isn't so the horses won't feel the hurt, is it? It's only for the spectators. So they won't see the horses inside. Yes, it is for the protection of the spectators. I knew you wouldn't like the horses. But I desperately like the horses. I know just how the horses feel with their nice pads to protect them from the spectators. You ought to put some pads on me to protect you, poor darling. Cynthia, will you kindly, kindly, kindly stop it? Yes. I shouldn't talk too much. That's another of the things I do too much. Excuse me for a moment. Harry! It's all right, dear. I'll be back in a jiffy. Send this right away, please. Immediately, Senor District. The lady left, Senor. Where did she go? I don't know, in as much as she left for the dancer. She what? She said, to tell you if you inquire, there was no use of looking for her. She said she is not coming back.
shoulder. You suit marvelously, you know. How are you feeling? Better. I thought maybe you would. You were sleeping when I left. Shall I relieve Molo? No, he wants to shave me and I want to talk. Well, everyone must have someone to talk with. He's the perfect audience. Doesn't understand a word I tell him, therefore we don't quarrel. Let's not quarrel anymore, no matter how nervous we get. Well, you needn't be afraid of me anymore. I'm not afraid of you. I never was. Will you call me if you need me? Sure. Come back any time you feel like it. Molo? Indio, Buana? Mio o Mimi. Africans may have the right system with women at that. Buy one for a few cows, whatever it is you happen to use for money. And if she isn't satisfactory, you get your money back. We use our emotions. And if it cracks up, we don't get anything. Devil, your buana and Gumu Sam. <laughs> sure, sure. Buana's whiskers very tough. A lot of things are tough. You know, son, there was one woman, and what a woman! I wrote a book about her too. Another woman, another book. It wasn't about Spain or Africa or anything that I cared about. But into it, I poured the anger that I felt and some dirt and belly laugh humor. Just right to tickle the smart ones on the Riviera. And I'd found something, son. I'd found success. Swim very well. Naturally, when I have an incentive, swimming to you, darling. Do you do everything else as well? I swam over. Don't hurry. <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter? You afraid of startling the fish? Afraid of you. Frigid lips. I swam way over to tell you that I've changed your plans. You are not going away tonight. No. Well, swim around and tell me why you think I'm not. Because you run around, the what does it get you? Only dizzy. If you have to write, I have a typewriter at home. I let you call your own. You've got a few other things at home I'd like to call my own. I can't let you go, darling. I can't let go of you. <laughs> Count us, there's no one like you. <laughs> Climb up here on this boat. I can't, Harry. I've hardly anything on. Get up here. Please, lover. Not out here. I suppose it was the elusiveness of Liz which was her main attraction. She was something to hunt down and trap and capture. The Countess Elizabeth. Frigid Liz. The semi-iceberg of the semi-tropics. It was fun, son. It was just lousy with fun. It would be much more polite if you'd say it, darling. 
once I'm speechless. At least say that you don't like it. But I do, immensely. I admit that something has me puzzled. Would you mind answering one question? Not at all. What's the question? Well, why do you want her for this? I admit she must be nice to have around for Harry. Yes. I don't think I introduced you. Beatrice, and this is my fiancé's nice uncle, Mr. Swift. What's your team with you? Beatrice. There's a fine lot of divinity in that name. Dante, you know. Yes, darling, I know. Beatrice, are you divine? Oui, monsieur. I'm just bet. Tell me, Uncle Bill. Oh, may I call you Uncle Bill? I all mean. Uh, are you planning a long visit with Harry now that you are back from India? I'm afraid not. Are you? I'm not visiting Harry. Harry is visiting me. Well, whichever. It must be wonderful for both of you. We think so. As I look at her again, another question crosses my mind. As interesting as the last one? When you and Harry get married, how many children will you have? Why don't you go ask him? I may. By the way, where is genius shining at the moment? In his study. He's probably doing something constructive. I like it here. I don't bother you. Just continue. Tell me, have you named her yet? You have a suggestion? Ceres, the goddess of fertility. Madame? Oui. The lavandeurs est en bas. Merci. Excuse me. Why don't you finish her for me while I'm gone? Good. Come on in. Now I can stop. If you do, I'll go away again. <laughs> Just let me sit here, tidily in the corner. Fine view. Mm, a lot of day. Costs a pretty penny. Did you see Liz? Speaking of a pretty penny? No, just speaking of Liz. Marry her, my boy. It's the surest cure. Now, what do you mean by that one? Lover, may I come in? You are everywhere, aren't you, darling? It's the only attribute I share with the Almighty. Angel, are you doing anything that's stinkingly important? Confidential accounts, it couldn't be less important or more stinking. What, silly? I'm writing an interview with myself on the subject of success. Yeah, yeah. Your latest has sold another 100,000, it says here. Oh, amazing. Hollywood wants it. They'll say they put garbo in it. Why, that should please you. Well, how did I get in the habit of becoming involved with women who always open my mail? You get such fascinating letters, darling. Cosmopolitan wants another series of short stories, and Smart said, too. They pay the tops, it says. Well, why should a writer feel guilty because people are willing to pay good money for the sweat off his brow? They shouldn't, my boy. No one ever paid for a drop of mine, except a few libraries and museums, which reminds me to tell you, I've decided to settle down and take over that museum. Well, that's wonderful news. Does that mean we'll see you often, darling? When you're in Paris. My bones will be on display amongst the other antiquities every day except Thursday. <laughs> on the Avenue Prison, was. Harry de Bon. I'll walk out with you. I'll find the door. I imagine you're wanted in there. Why the devil haven't you the grace to tell me the truth? What truth? That you think my book stinks and everything I'm doing stinks. I came to praise Caesar, not to bury him. Most men would envy you. Make a handsome living, have the acquaintance of most of the interesting people of the world. All this and this too. You're young, you have your health, you look well. Fairly well. Come to see me soon, dear boy. Oh, Harry, have you done any hunting lately? No, why do you ask? Too bad. A man should never lose his hand at hunting. I had it all, and what did I have? My name in the papers, my face in the better magazines. 
And where was Cynthia? People asked for my autograph and pointed me out. And why didn't she come back to me? At last, I made a cry for help, getting her American address from Emil. And so, my darling Cynthia, I've never been able to kill the loneliness, but only made it worse. Everyone I've been with has only made me miss you more. And what you did can never matter. I cannot cure myself of loving you. And one day outside the Ritz, I followed a woman whom I thought was you. I follow any woman who looks like you in some way, afraid to see that it's not you, afraid to lose the feeling it gives me. Yes? Oh. oh. I beg your pardon. I thought you were someone else, someone I know. I, I'm really sorry. I, I didn't know you. A woman with a family? They're my brother's children. Now, why did I tell you that? Aren't you Mr. Harry Street, the writer? Well, that's right, I'm afraid. I think I'm rather sorry I'm not the right one. Anything interesting? Routine. A few interesting builds for you to foot. No, well, oh, I mean, that letter you're trying to hide. Darling! Please! Oh, right. Poopy! Angel! You came just at the right moment. Now, let's see, I don't think you've met my fiancé, Mr. Street. Princess von Steffen Grand, you piot. How do you do? How do you do? I suppose now, sit outside. down and let Charles pour you a drink. My devoted fiancé and I are just in the middle of a little summer. <laughs> Who is this? The Cynthia Green. Hotel Florina, Madrid. She must be a girl named Cynthia Green. Is she a fan of yours? Not the last I heard. From Madrid. My dear devoted fiancé had so many fans. And I am one of them. Oh, I just devoured your last book. Well, I hope it didn't give you a bellyache. Hmm? Is this letter so important, Harry? No. That isn't important at all. Good. Then you shan't be troubled with it. You go. Ah. I won't let you make a fool of me. Ah. You said it was not important. The whole thing is not important. Harry, listen to me. Lover, darling, stop and listen to me. Please, Harry, stop and listen to me. Please, Harry, I'm listening. I know that sometimes I must draw your nerves. Oh. And sometimes you're on my nerves, too. Oh, oh. I know that sometimes, sometimes I'm inadequate for you. I know my faults, but I love you, darling. Truly, I do. I love you as much as I can. And if there's something deeply troubling you... Yes, there is something troubling me. Then only tell me. It may be the dawning of suspicion. But the fact that the airplane is faster than the horse does not necessarily prove that the world is getting any better. No, I mean about us. About us, there is nothing troubling me deeply at all. Where are you going? Are you going to Madrid? Perhaps I'll go to Madrid. I'll send you a postcard. Oh, Harry, you look so silly. Such a fool trying to look like a knight questing for the Holy Grail. And maybe you're right. Maybe I'll just have me a good look-see for the Holy Grail. Horses, Harry! The same to you. With tassels on them. Horses, Harry! The same to you, Thomas. My 
Now, Cynthia was not at the Hotel Florinda in Madrid or anywhere else. The lousy civil war had fixed Madrid. Before I knew it, I was carrying a gun. And I wished I weren't. by the name of Cynthia Green. Yo no entiendo inglés, señor. Con permiso. Usted deja correr bien, porque el camino está muy malo, ¿eh? Y cuidado con esos... ¡Vamos! ¡Camaradas! ¡Hermanos! ¡Nuestra hora de triunfo y de gloria se acerca! Wish I was back in Detroit. You're an American, huh? Yeah. Wish I was back in Detroit, where I was when I got sucked into this. I just woke up, I got sucked into this. Any of that bourgeois? No. What are you doing here? You'd die laughing if I told you. Darling, darling, 
Will you excuse me? So many things. Oh, funny. When you touch me, I still turn giddy. I could be dying if you touch me. I turn giddy. You won't die. ¡Cúrate! ¡Nos atacan de nuevo! ¡Vamos! ¡Apúrense! ¡Que viene el contraataque! ¡Vamos! ¡A prisa! ¡A prisa! ¡No disponemos de todo el día! ¡Vamos! Votre oncle vous attend. Monsieur, je regrette de vous faire attendre, mais il a été tellement malade. Il y a tellement de gens qui l'ennuient. C'est par ici, monsieur, là. Uncle Bill. Well, I came as soon as your letter caught up with me. What is all this? Well, I'm pas malade, pas important. I will get you a good doctor. Uh, uh, doctors. It was a wise man who said that if all the medicines were dumped into the sea, it would be a horrible day for the fish. <laughs> but don't worry about me. I shall be in excellent hands before long. What about yourself now? You don't look happy. I'm all right. What have you been doing with yourself all these years? You've traveled? Followed my nose, just wandered, but about where, you. Where, where, where? Tell me where. Hmm? Nothing to brag about. Oh, I've seen the seven wonders of the world. That's what you mean, or however many there are. They're not very wonderful. Then you haven't really seen. You haven't hunted. Hunted? Yes. <laughs> well, why should I? Well, exactly the way the world pays me a very good living to be. I amuse the people with my little tales. This I can do with my left hand, which leaves my right hand free for other things. I've destroyed my talent by not using it, by betrayals of myself, the things I believed in, by drink, by laziness, by pride and by prejudice, by hook and by crook. <laughs> What is this, a catalog of old books? Harry. Once I hunted in Spain for the Holy Grail. But they'd busted the Grail. They'd busted her all to pieces. The Grail? Why should I blame them? I killed her. I, I don't understand. Well, Harry, in your absence, I've kept you with me as well as I could. <laughs> My latest, did you hate it? I love everything you write, Harry. But you couldn't finish it. Take out the envelope. It's for you. In it, you'll find the legacy I'm leaving you when I lay down my bones amongst the other relics here. But I don't need anything. Are you sure? All the royalties are rolling in. That's one thing about success, even when it's a failure. It snowballs for a while. There's also one thing about a snowball. It has nowhere to go except downhill. Well, that's not money. It isn't anything material. 
Oh, I thought and thought about what I might leave you. Finally, I... I wrote a little something. A riddle. A riddle? I, I don't want you to read it until after I've gone. Because you might ask me the answer. And I don't know the answer. But if you can find it, it will save you. Change. We have no business, but no change. Oh, look! See? It's the same. Uh, that's because it's preserved in a bottle. You know, Emil, that might be a pretty good idea for us, too. Formerly, when you came here, you were not bitter. Formerly. But I came here. You know, there was one night. see only a black side. We must think of the future. I have been left a legacy. Il a fait un héritage. Quel miracle! Oh, Harry, je t'adore! Ah, je t'adore you too, Jake. It is a riddle. Kilimanjaro is a snow-covered mountain 19,710 feet high. It is said to be the highest mountain in Africa, close to the western summit. There is the dried and frozen carcass of a leopard. In all of that snow? <laughs> so they would have us believe. Oh, but qu'est-ce qu'elle t'aimait? Some lousy cat got cold feet. Ce type est complètement crevé. Oh, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. Here comes the kicker. No one has explained what the leopard was seeking at that altitude. Is that all? <laughs> it's an unsatisfactory story. It ends badly. But what was the leopard doing up there in the first place? That's the riddle. And if I can find the answer, I'm supposed to win the prize. Come on, let's, let's put our fine minds together, Jake. Perhaps he took the wrong trail and followed the wrong scent. And so he got lost and died. Yeah. That's a very sensible solution, Emil. For him. And for me.
Would you like a drink? What did you say? Well, I'm going to have one. Why don't we have one together? Ask Molo, you know I don't speak the lingo. Molo. And do you want it? Let's say whiskey soda. And do you want it? About which one have you been thinking, Harry? What do you mean about which one? About Cynthia or about Liz? That makes you think you know so much. Maybe I was thinking about you and me. No, never about you and me. At least not with any honesty. Well, that just shows you how wrong you can be. I was thinking about the way we met on the bridge near Notre Dame. When you mistook me for your Cynthia? You've never been able to forgive me for not being her, have you? You really want to go into that one? What else did you think about you and me, Harry? Oh. <laughs> that we had a Lulu of the beginning. <laughs> Really a Lulu. Yes, we had that all right. Well, neither of us were children. We both knew what we were getting. Why did you suddenly want to come here? You owe me the courtesy of being honest. All right. I'll be honest. Because why I wanted to come here is the point of the whole buddy joke. Because I had found the answer to a riddle. That's why. About a leopard who'd lost his way. And I thought that if I had followed the wrong scent and was going to perish, then I'd better get back to the jungle from where I'd started. It had been good here. I had been right here. And I thought I could get back to it that way. Back into training. Work the fat off my soul. The way a fighter goes into the mountains to work the fat off his body. I might have made it, too. Two weeks ago, that thorn had needled me. is here every night. Every night for two weeks. He's the one who makes all the noise at night. I don't mind him too much. You know what that bad breath just said to me? The hyena? That it's getting very late for me. Aren't you funny? A lousy timepiece. Really, darling, aren't you be... What is it? Uh, it's nothing. How do you feel? All right. A little wobbly. Can you eat something now? No. A little broth will keep your strength up. I don't need my strength up. Don't tell me you don't know.
do it. Jumbo. Jumbo, Macaulay. Who is he? One of the boys of the local clinic of the Mayo Brothers, I do believe. A witch doctor? That's right. He's the uncle of the boy that I tried to save from the hippo. Send him away. We don't want him. Machawi Alisi Kia Buana Majangwa Sana. Who you atafania dawa ke buana kalisana? Who ganjwa kishikabisa? He's heard that I'm sick with the bad spirits. He wants to be in on the kill. Get rid of him, Harry. He gives me the creeps. Ask Dr. Pasteur to sit down. Katie, Katie. Please send him away. Jumbo, Buana Mokwambo. Jumbo Muchai. of some special sort to sharpen his wits. Now he's going to roll the bones. No fooling. That stinking cat skin bag, he's got a couple of dozen bits of bones from the hind legs of anteaters, tortoises, baboons, and whatnot. From the pattern that they will make when he throws them on the ground, he will be able to diagnose what ails me. Go ahead, you faded duck. Box cars. <laughs> mm. <laughs> oh, that man finally gets tired. Molo, Kangoni. In the tent. What are you going to do? Joe, I don't want to go in the tent. In the tent. Oh, it's a clear night. It's not going to rain. You'll do just as I say. What a life. Man can't live as he pleases. Can't even die as he pleases. Mimi na kuja memsa. Dead soldiers. Or ballet skirts. Awa te ari memsa. Afuta kiboko, mafuta bongo. Mizizi kalisana. I'm sorry, I don't understand. I, I, I'm. About it. Oh, so I've seen the world change. Yeah, not just the advancing, but the people. People change. It's my duty to write it. I've, I've been in it. I've seen it. I've been in it. I've seen it. I've watched it. Darling, did I hurt you? I don't want to hurt you. Oh, no. I 
have been writing. I know, Harry. For a million years. Can you take dictation? No, I never learned. Oh, that's all right. Wouldn't be time anyway. Seems that I could get it all into one paragraph. If I could get it just right. Well, <laughs> hello, Molo, you white man's burden, you. And Dio, and Dio. Doctor, I've only got the first aid well, what, What's he gonna do? Sprinkle me with monkey dust? Darling. A hair from the tail of a leopard, the poor... Darling, oh. please try to listen. You told me in certain parts of your leg there isn't any feeling. Wood. Funny as It says in the book it's kind of paralysis, the blood vessels. One should use hot compresses to keep the circulation going. Oh, you, you, you tell him to use the lion medicine. It's very Darling, potent. don't make fun even of him. He only wants to do his best. And I'm trying to do my best. I'm trying to do my best, too, darling. If you'll only do that, Harry. Hi-ho! Said Raleigh. <laughs> All over. What a sharp knife. The area, slip sharp point of knife. Apply dry dressing. Stretcher bearers! Leave him alone! Stretcher what are you trying to bearers! Darling, don't! Sir. It's all right, it's all right! Get out! Get out! <laughs> A lousy fever. <laughs> fever. <laughs> Darling, are you conscious enough to listen to me? There's a very large swelling on your leg. I'm going to open it. <laughs> Do you feel something strange? Yes, darling. Death is near us. Do you think he could come so close to you and I wouldn't know it? I don't ever believe her. what to tell you about it. A scythe and a skull. Just now it came with a rush. Not the rush of water, but of wind. And, and the funniest thing the hyena skipped lightly. God help us.
Walty. Toka Walty. Nataka mem sami. Nataka nini. I don't understand. Go away. I mean, look at the tree. The tree. Well, I'll be... They've gone. Gregory Peck suffered a knee injury while making The Snows of Kilimanjaro in a scene where he picks up Ava Gardner. The film had to stop production while he recovered. <laughs> Too bad he had already shot the scenes where he was lying down. I feel so helpless. I wish there was something I could do. For the Film Detective, I'm Dana Hersey. Thanks for being with us.